We have today seen Ismail, the autonomous shuttle from France, driving here in Kongsberg completely without any safety driver on board, with a Brockard as a PTA driving it. This is the first time globally with autonomous shuttles in mixed traffic or with pedestrian and bicycles. We introduce future mobility and we try to introduce it today. And everything that we learn today, we let it be integrated in the cities of tomorrow and of the future. This project is an important stepping stone, not just for Norway, but for Europe as a whole. Kongsberg and Viken are recognized as very important to the transport system of the future. We are looking forward to continuing to deliver real autonomous service together. In 2021, Brakar V are again the first in the world within the public transport industry when they start to use self-driving buses without security operator on board. We will, based on the good results here in Kongsberg, also start using autonomous uh, transportation in Drammen and even in a, a mountain resort uh, called Nordefjell, about 100 kilometers west of Oslo. <laughs> I'm also very happy that our local solutions provider and experts in applied autonomy can bring their results to Europe and the rest of the world. Easy Mile is delighted to be a key technology provider alongside applied autonomy in this project. Uh, the deployment in Kongsberg is the perfect example on how autonomous shuttles can revitalize public transport in a city. We have a mission to make cities more cl cleaner, more sustainable and more livable by introducing high innovative forms of mobility. It's very easy to claim that you are going to shoot to the moon as long as you don't have to prove that you can actually do it. But the day a company buys a product from you, your dreams are confronted to the expectations of the customer. Then there's no more dream, just a product that needs to be mature. And that's what removing any safety attendant on board is such a critical part of. We want to learn how customers, motorists, cyclists and pedestrians adapt to this type of technology and how we must develop our services. Broker decided early that the project would not only be a pilot or a demonstrator project that showed that, that there was available technology that could drive this type of vehicle. Eight of ten passengers are positive or very positive to these services. So then I have to ask you, how does this feel to be first? <laughs> uh, I'm of course very proud and I proud very with uh, also the other actors that uh, we are working together with. We have to see uh, how can we use what we have learned so far to enable services. And this service that we have now enabled, it is part of the public transport. So it is possible then to find uh, operation uh, domains where this can be implemented already. So therefore I challenge European cities now to define where this service can be implemented. And I also challenge the, the other technology partners to see how we can also secure operational efficiency and operational day-to-day -day service at the same level as public transport are working regular buses. That is, we should, should achieve that together. So autonomous transport on public road is coming in the safe and progressive way it should. Uh, this is why projects like these are critical. They bring key players in industry working together on meeting this technical challenge, as well as evolving the regulations that go with it. We've been working with Applied Autonomy for a number of years now and are fully aligned with their vision and commitment to autonomous driving. Ours are very complementary services and technology. By combining our knowledges and combining our resources, we can really make an uh, impact and, and take really big steps into the global market. And if we do all that correctly, hey, this could be our next gold oil. Ah, it's great. It's, uh, it's uh, another step forward. This is new mobility.